We've got unbelievable creativity. You can go Friday night to these poetry jams all around the country. See, magnificent creativity. Definitely. Me and Cliff just talking about that. His brother here, powerful poet and hip hop artist, right? Unbelievable. God bless you. But you got to get a deal. Right? And when you get the deal, you got to make sure there's distribution. And you know, the radio's got to deal with oligopolies. That's basically two companies that run about 85% of all radio. That's why you hear the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again. That's why you don't hear a whole lot of Lupe Fiasco. You don't hear Dead Press. You don't hear Kilobyte. You don't hear Common. You don't hear the... Oh, Killer in the building! Come up here, Killer. Come up here, Killer. Kilobyte in the house. Kilobyte in the house. Kilobyte. You don't hear Killer Mike, you don't hear Ryan Fest, you don't hear Malik Yusuf, you don't hear Neo Abyss, you don't hear M1, you don't hear Stick Man, you don't hear KRS One. We talking about unbelievable folk. Rod Digger, get on the sister side. You see what I mean? He's an unbelievable artist. But his radios will not play them at all. So that it means then that you end up with an audience that doesn't have the kind of my dear brother, how you doing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, kill the the place. Indeed, indeed, indeed. It's a blessing to see this, brother. And you see him, you see both him now, as well just, as the tradition that works through him. Yeah, we just say improvisation. That's where it is. We just, we, hey, we'll just add a person at our discretion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Talking about hip hop and distribution, so so let's just go on and let let, let brother let, let Mike brother kill uh, get some of this because oh, you know Lord. you are the reason, brother. I mean, who is these brother? Okay, when I gave the call, I need to get with him. You you know you have been an artist in the game on a very grassroots level. You know what I'm saying? You've been signed to a major label. Uh, talk about that process for you and that journey. You know, because you've been through a lot of self discovery. You've not been scared to evolve. You know, talk about, about your your experience in the music industry. Yeah. And even why you chose when a, when a lot of brothers who were sent the invitation didn't want to get down on the Cornell West Project because they, they, it might hurt their chance. So break that. Well, I, I don't know if necessarily... Uh, I used to think a lot of times it was a grander conspiracy. Okay. But um, it's funny because on the way over here, I was actually reading something I've heard about forever and never read and that was the whole talent and tenth paper written by W.E.B. Du Bois. If you've only heard about it, you only hear about it in the context of contrasting Booker T. Washington. You know, he was just for the educational leaders and things of that nature. And you hear Booker T. was for training people in terms of their hands and their minds at Tuskegee. But when you take it apart and you look at a person in its own context and you read their words, you get a great understanding. Wisdom comes out of that, not just education. And what I saw was he was talking about making a total human being when teaching. That um, to only be teaching a carpenter to be a carpenter is not more worthy than teaching a carpenter to be a man. And then teaching young people to be men. And I think that what hip hop did early on, you know, it's a lot of that. It taught independence, it taught self-reliance. Um, I came in about seven years ago well, record deals were still relatively lucrative. You talked about a quarter million dollars an artist would get from 10, 15, to 50 grand. They could invest in their community. They could buy chains. They could do whatever they chose to do. But no one was there to teach the actual artist how to be a man, how to make sure that you can live off this, how to make sure you protected your own things. Not that it was a grand conspiracy and mass raping was going on at that point. It was just a lot of the foolishness and folly and boyism was put before you. Clothes, cars, um, living above your means. The same stuff that's gotten Americans in the position we are. There was no manhood training. Now what basically everybody getting fired allowed to happen is a quick maturation. Everybody that got dropped off record labels, everybody that couldn't get a record deal had to find another way to man up. And thanks to the internet, and thanks to people using other resources besides radio and besides traditional media, what you have forging now is a whole new scope of entrepreneurs who aren't just sharecropping like we did in the 80s and 90s. In the 80s and 90s, you would go find an artist, 
you make money off that artist, you sell that artist to the master, you move on to the next crop. Now you have young men who are able to make enough money off selling product on the internet that they can demand a high ransom when a, pro when a, de when a deal approaches them, and or they can make money and free flow infinitely. And it's just a great time to be a black musician. What we need to do is to bridge the man-boy gap and the woman sister gap, the woman daughter gap in the community so that when you hear about positive music, you hear about more artists than the five you generally hear about. When you hear about negative music, you can understand those songs from a level deeper than what you've been taught to think about it. You know, right now we're like, everybody's thinking about Haiti, but the only gangster rapper, not rapper, the only gangster rapper, plus rapper, because no other rapper rapped about Haiti in the past year is Rick Ross. And all he raps about is cocaine. <laughs> but in rapping about cocaine, he said that money from, the bur from those bricks bought rice in Haiti. So why is it that a rapper who only raps about drug dealing is the only person who thought to rap about the only free black republic in the Western Hemisphere? Where were your positive rappers in? And the question comes in, why am I in my everyday living black life, because cocaine affects everybody, all of us got somebody in rehab and we pray and go, why am I not more in tune? Why am I not more in tune with all levels of society? As I read the words, of Dr. Du Bois, what I saw was he was in tune not with just the educated and the elite. He was in tune with how being educated and the eliteness of education would help a barber, how it would help young men in the community appreciate, how it would help the quality of teachers at that time they called them Negro schools. <coughs> so our challenge is to build a bridge from the church to the secular, from the old, from the young, from those all, from those of us who've got old enough to forget what the blues really said. Because when I looked at Cadillac Records, that was better than any Biggie or Tupac movie. So I want us to work on bridging those gaps. Work on finding an artist that you can attach yourself to, that you can support. Tupac didn't die. He broke apart in a thousand other small artists that all need your support. What do you want to do to support them? All right, that's good. That's good. So we don't have, we don't